Hello! I'm Katie! I'm Morton. Uh, we are going to be doing a thing in this video where we look at what is inside of here and that is our sashes and we're going to be talking about what the significance of these things are and we're going to be answering questions that amazing people have asked, just really deep thought-provoking questions. So I'd like you to see it down in the description and watch the video that's kind of a Covenant Player crash course before watching this so that this video will make more sense. Okay, so let's pull these things out. Yes, in case, in case you're not aware what exactly we mean when we say a sash. This. These are our Covenant Player sashes. Yes. This represents a lot of memories and a lot of ministry that happened within the ministry called Covenant Players. Yes. Um, these various things represent um, the, the number of performances that we did with Covenant Players. Over here. The these represent the number of roles for how many different roles that we played. Um, the founder of the ministry wrote more than 3,500 of them. So, you know, yeah, plays. So plays. Yeah, uh, so we've got a few of them. Yeah, and some of those plays we also did uh, different roles at different times in the same play, mm -hmm. or we did them in multiple different languages. That's yeah. why we have these, these stars on here represent uh, roles performed in a language other than your native tongue. The color of the sash is connected to the number of performances as well. So, um, yes, this is the very this is the very first thing that any covenant player gets. And that represents what is it 175 performances? 100. 100, 100 performances. Yes. Yes. So, that is the or the or first and then what is this one? This is my last one that I got. This is 6000 performances. Yes. Uh, oh, and these things down here are various things for service in different kind, in different <coughs> ways, um, and ministry, yeah. and faith, and yeah. And when when someone has like overcome a battle, when someone has given sacrificially, those these are kind of opportunities to recognize that and to give them a chance to give a speech in front of the body of other Covenant players to encourage them with their story. Yes. The whole thing is really about celebrating what God has done and recognizing what God has done in one another. But I think yeah. now we should jump into the questions and then we can kind of reference the sashes as it comes up. Out of all the places you visited, which was one you enjoyed the most? Oh. Come on! Questions like that. Um. I forgive you. Well, we had. It's it's so hard to say because there are different different aspects. Mm -hmm. um, we spent a lot of time in the south, south of Germany and Austria and Switzerland, and so we we got to know people there very well. We had many very dear friends that we unfortunately mm -hmm. have lost contact with, pretty much all of them. But it was just it was so special to get to come back to people over and over again mm -hmm. and and sort of meet those people and, and, and really connect. We had some, I mean, in other places too, but I felt there especially, there were people that we really, really connected with. I mean, with. out of just plain enjoyment, the south of France, man, that church where we were just like hanging out and I was, he was not drinking champagne and playing in the pool after the service, like, that was amazing. <laughs> Swimming in the Mediterranean in, no, in October. Yeah. That was awesome. South Africa was really South cool Africa. too. And just the nature and the wildlife mm -hmm. and just that completely different type of society to be in that was mm -hmm. amazing. When did you see God work the most? I really feel like there was a real mighty time in Germany. Remember that pastor who was like, I, pr I somebody said, aren't there too many chairs being set up? And he's like, no, God is going to fill every single one of these chairs. And he did. And he yeah, did. That was, where yeah, was that? that? Uh, oh, where was that? It was somewhere in Tealingen, I feel like. Mm. But I can't remember exactly where. But that was, um, yeah, just an amazing time of ministry there. And, but oh, but so many others too. But there have been just so many, so many little things that we've seen God work 
I mean, it is also in ourselves. Where God has worked in us, mm. and other times where God has worked through us, and well, often both at the same time. But it's sort of like I feel like God so really did a big thing in us through our obedience to go to France when we didn't speak the language and we were scared, yes, coopless. And <laughs> we were, um, we'd, we'd been ready to transition out of Covenant Players and start our family and go on to the next stages of life. I, th I think especially um, when we took on leadership in mm. France, that was, that was something that just was amazing to see God's provision of. And also the, the, just the support and love that we got from people around us, especially... Uh, a colleague of ours who had completed her time with Covenant Players, she had finished her commitment and decided to come back for three weeks. Was it that long? I, th if, I think it was two or three weeks. Oh, wow. Um, to go on the road with us in the beginning because she spoke French and we sort of spoke a bit of French, but not enough to really just throw ourselves into it. Uh, full pace. Well, so no. we got to keep going though, because yeah. we've got a lot. This what? is this might turn into a series of videos. Yeah, this might be about nine hundred and seventy-two. <laughs> what did God teach you about yourself during that time? Oh yes. Okay. Um, hmm. Do you want to think about it for a sec while I answer? If you have a good answer, go I'm ahead. I'm sure something will come out of my mouth. Oh. What God taught me about myself during that time that I can do anything. And it sounds so trite, but like God can do anything through us if we're willing to try. And about moving through in my fear, because at that point when we went to France, my German was pretty good, so I was pretty confident. And then going to French, the French language just, you know, my ego was... <laughs> but I was able to trust God even more and see even an, another level of miracles, another level of provision that I never thought was possible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to agree that with that point that learning to trust was huge. Just mm -hmm. I what I really needed to learn and I still forget sometimes, <laughs> I'm still I'm still learning over and over again, is that I don't always know best. Mm -hmm. Even though I like to think I do. Um but that was something that that God Showed me over and over again mm -hmm. that. So Martin. He knew he knows better. Yes. What was your first? Let's do a bit more rapid fire okay. with these if we can. Just, Lightning round. Yeah. yeah. What was your first experience with theater? My first experience with theater was doing skits and scouts. Yeah. Mm. Scout My first camp. experience was first grade. I was the narrator of a play. Go go go! Yeah. How many different plays did you do? Oh. Well, this is where we need a visual aid. I. You can go first because my my number's bigger. Yeah, it's hard to tell because as we said, sometimes you got multiple roles in the same play. You did the same Maybe. play, never, but I did perform over three hundred roles at least. And I performed five hundred roles, but these little stars here, these are the most significant thing because the stars mean foreign language. So this is one hundred and seventy-five foreign language roles. Is it 140? Oh, 140. Just kidding. Yeah. That's This is why you're here. I, <laughs> I have a terrible memory. 140 foreign language plays. Yeah. See, I, I, I got a lot more of those stars because English is not my mother tongue. So, and most of our performing was in English. You Can, can you hold it a yeah. little bit closer? So, so I got stars on all of mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what are three of your favorite memories in CP? Okay, okay. Big ones. Um... I have a sort of just from my my favorite just from personal enjoyment was that I got to direct this ridiculous comedy play called Please Don't Confuse Me and it's it is humor built on just puns, and, puns and misunderstandings and there was this moment in I think the second rehearsal where I directed a specific moment the specific action in the play and one of the actors went oh now i see how this is funny 
and that's just that is one of my most cherished memories mm. um just on a personal level then i have my favorite memory of god providing for us and this one this is a story i tell a lot um and, but it's pretty long so i just give the shortened version was we did not have any money um we went to a church sort of it's on sunday morning asking if we could do a play um they and we got a little bit of money but i was sort of a bit uh, calculating the whole time because we needed we had no money to eat lunch and we didn't have enough fuel to get to the next place we needed to go to so I was sort of calculating and me going maybe we have enough fuel anyway and this is enough for lunch and then someone invited us out for lunch and then they filled up our, our, our fuel tank and then they gave us another 50 euro after that and it was just God showing me that he knows what he's doing and he he's got our back and he will provide in a way in, in a way that I just could not expect mm. so that's my favorite story of God's provision and then the third one is uh, from a performance that Katie and I did on our own at a church in Utah it was Christmas time and we were so excited because Christmas we can we have a lot of really cool Christmas plays and covenant players and so we planned way more material than we actually had time to put together and we're like this is not going to work we need to change something and so we threw out half of our plan put in other plays into this program the set that we had sort of that we had done before sort of that it works and one of those plays that we just put in there because ah it'll work it's not what we wanted to do but it will be fine had a massive impact on some of the people in the audience. It was a, a young couple there who, after that play, decided to give both each other and Jesus a, another chance when they were ready to give up. Mm. And that was sort of, that's my favorite story of how God can use us even when we have no clue what we're doing. Because in Covenant Players, it's so much of the time we're just a seed planting ministry. We don't get to know what happens in people's hearts. We do the plays, we leave. Yeah, but here the impact was mm -hmm. immediate and we got to find out about it and that's just amazing. Okay, so favorite moments. Um, directing, I got to direct Penny Jo and Ann Sieber. And Ann was an awesome, awesome lady. We named one of our kids after her, her middle name. And she, I directed them in this play called Tough Young Lady, and Anne got an award for my direction. Oh, I, I knew I was going to cry at some point in this video. I was like, I should have tissues ready. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the whole thing about, the, about these uh, awards, because um, we, there was, at the banquet, like, sort of the situation where we got to get the awards on the sashes, there was, would also be sort of diploma awards given out as mm -hmm. well for specific accomplishes, mm -hmm. accomplishments in acting and directing and, and those in those picture those um they, they used to be trophies but now we get pictures and they mm -hmm. actually have a picture from the play but anyway um that was so i was so proud that she got recognized for her acting because of my direction my, my direction was a part of it anyway mm -hmm. um another amazing thing was finding out that after we left France to go to America, which was the plan, and I'm going to put a link to another video I did where I did a kind of podcast interview and I tell more of this story, like the long version of this story, so I'll put that in the description. But um, finding out that Melody was taking on leadership after we left so that the ministry in France would continue, yeah. that was amazing. And the third thing that comes to mind of really powerful memory is I did a singlet, which is another word for a one-person play about the character Joan of Arc. And I, it's, I performed this play in our retreat time in the summer, and it was just so powerful. I, as people, people were supposed to come into the room quietly, but they didn't. And we tried. Anyway. I, I was in character and I was thinking about these thoughts of you know, have everyone in the, jo, Joan's character thinking everyone says she's crazy, everyone says she's not hearing from God and as people were coming into the room talking I heard 
their voices suddenly become the voices of my accusers and my attackers. And I it was never directed to cry in this play, but I was the play started with me clutching the bed behind my back to the audience, clutching it and praying hard. And I started to cry because God brought back another memory to mind about giving me a new name of Mighty Warrior. And that name came back to me like, Katie is a Mighty Warrior, Joan is a Mighty Warrior. And like, it all just kind of clicked and the, the play just felt so powerful and so fulfilling. Yeah. I had snot running down, it was amazing. Do you believe, <laughs> Do you believe being in CP changed you at all? And if so, how? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you, mean, you mean apart from all the aches and pains? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're getting old. <laughs> yeah, no, but the whole thing, as I said, learn, learning about myself that I don't always know best, but it's also sort of a... I mean, okay, I was always, I've always been pretty confident in myself, but... I feel that I have a confidence that's sort of more grounded based on knowing sort of God is, is you know, is with me and that I, uh, everything I have is from him rather than the confidence in my own ability. And that's, that's something that I, I definitely got out of CP. Mm. I was scared of so many things before, and so many people put their wisdom and their training into me, and, get, and I gained confidence to do things I never thought possible, and I would not have that if I hadn't gone into it. Yeah. If I hadn't stepped out in faith, I would be such a fearful person, but now I know I can learn. I performed 12-page plays in French before I could speak French. Yeah. I'm, I know that anything is possible and I've developed so many skills uh, and, and passions of leadership, of organization, of seeing what needs to be done and, and making it happen and so many of those skills I never would have discovered. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like, um, it's so funny that, yeah, I, I, I know I am still a deeply flawed person, but sort of Kevin players made me aware of my of many of my flaws and help helps me to at least address them to a, to you know much more than I did before. And another thing I thought of, Covenant players taught us about the value of affirming one another. Yes. It's such an affirming community and to be able to say to someone what your gifts are, what your talents are, how you've impacted their life, how you love and appreciate them, yeah. that is such a pivotal thing. Yeah. It's just not, not done enough not o really. outside of this w little world that we lived in. Swedish doesn't have a word for affirmation. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> Who is your favorite unit leader? This was a little wink wink joke from Joe. Hey Joe. Favorite unit leader? I... I did not have that many unit leaders because because we got you you became a leader so young and we yeah were, yeah we were leaders so yeah so I've, and I I really liked all the unit leaders that I and we had mm, but, definitely I mean in, in so many very different ways sort of that's like, a whole we should do a whole video just talking about our different unit leaders yeah that would be fun. Um, I think what's oh, who's always going to have a really special place in my heart is Sally. She was my very first unit leader, and I was just such a mess when I joined, coming from a lot of difficult things going on in my life, yeah. and that what happened in my life during that tour, and she was just so patient with me, and so happy and positive, and yeah. Yeah, having, having a... Yes, yeah, strong, Sally. strong leader. When, when you first start out, is just is amazing. Yeah. I because that I also had very good experience my first mission with Kevin players. What's the no. funniest thing that happened to you or that happened? Oh, and like moments where I was on stage and you know the thing about comedy is you can't think it's funny. 
you have to be in the moment. So, so times when I knew in the part of my brain that it was funny and I had to hold for a laugh for a really long time, just like back against the wall, breathing deep, and the laugh just keeps going and going and going. Coming to play our audiences are the best audiences. Yeah. And yeah. then you just like keep get your line in there as the laughter is dying out. Such good and, times. And, and but also so some moments just in place that we saw in Kevin the Players creating as well. That mm, just J and X. Yeah. So many good yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, people f falling over when they were supposed to. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, th those those who were there will find this funny, and the rest of you will have no clue what's going on. But I will just say, you take what I give you. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was the most challenging thing? for you about being a full-time missionary and how did God get you through it? I think the most challenging thing for me was having to organize housing and how to in 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 setting that up and yeah. when I was when I was not a leader and I was not in charge of setting up that I had no problem. I was like God will provide, but when it was on my shoulders to make those phone calls, I would get so stressed out sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um but also God got was, me through it by always providing, sometimes not as fast as I wanted him to, but he always did. Yep. Um, but yeah, and it was, yeah, I think the hardest time really was the whole not having things. Mm. Personal space is a big one thing for you. Yes, yeah. Oh, um, having to be on and alive and awake for people all the time. Yeah, yeah, because I, I have a pretty strong introverted streak. And there would be times where we would just spend all day performing at a school and then the teachers wanted to take, you know, go out with us and show us around town and have dinner with us afterwards. And it was just, there was never a quiet moment and that was just really, really hard for me. But it was something that I just, yeah, God just sort of gave me the power I needed to just push through it and then take the time I could get later and mm -hmm. I survived. It was it was not always fun, but it, or it was one of those things. It was often sort of when I was there, it was fun in the moment, but then I would just be so tired afterwards. Mm -hmm. That was that was always hard. Also, um, a lot of time, just the logistics of things that I, I was often the only I was in, in several of our tours. I was the only driver. And that was also a lot of hard work when we had to go long distances. That was just very tiring. Mm. But again, God always provided. We always got where we needed to go safely. So Yeah. In the beginning, I remember it was really hard just feeling like I didn't know how to do anything. And it was going to be so impossible. But it's just learning, trusting, going, doing, learning by doing. Yeah. Okay, we'll do more later. Thanks for watching. Yes, thank you. <gasps>